Welcome to the lesson on the types of natural selection. In this lesson, we'll be discussing the three types of natural selection, including stabilizing selection, directional selection, and disruptive selection. Let's start with stabilizing selection. In stabilizing selection, extremes are selected against. A great example of this is human birth weight before um, the use of cesarean section became so common. The dotted line here represents the original population of, of babies born by humans. Well, over time, both extremes became selected against because low weight babies had more of, of a susceptibility to um, die early whereas large babies had a susceptibility also to die along with the mother because it would be hard to get the, the um, baby out of the womb. So the intermediate sized babies would be the ones most likely to continue on. And so we have a selection against both extremes in the population or after selection um, here, the intermediate baby weight um, would be the ones that would be most likely to continue on in the population. Our next type of natural selection is directional selection. This is when one extreme is selected for, the other extreme is selected against, and a great example of this is neck length in giraffes. So due to competition for food, Giraffes over time with longer necks became able to survive better because they could reach higher up into the trees to get food. So giraffes with short necks are selected against, while giraffes with long necks are selected for. This causes a shift in the population to the right in the direction of long neck giraffes. Again, here the dotted line showing the original population before selection with the shaded in blue graph, the population after selection. Our third type of selection is called disruptive selection. Another term you may hear is diversifying uh, selection. This one's interesting. It's where intermediates are selected against and the extremes are selected for. A great example of this is the color intensity in indigo buntings. So you can see here again, the dotted line is the original population with the dull colored indigo buntings be, being selected for and the colorful indigo buntings being selected for, but the intermediate colored birds are selected against. This creates two peaks on the graph here of the population after selection. And the reason for this is um, that the bright colored yearlings are preferred by females, so they get favored. So this one makes sense to us. But why the dull colored ones? The dullest and brightest yearlings were more successful than those with intermediate plumage in obtaining territory, pairing with females, and producing offspring. Dull yearlings survive better than their intermediates because colorful adults don't find them as a threat. And so the dull birds will sneak in and mate with the females while the colorful ones are fighting off the intermediate, uh, intermediate birds. Pretty cool. All right, now let's take a look at a couple videos that talk and discuss more these types of selections that give you other examples to hopefully help this make sense to you.